And my shirt's dirty. Hi. So I'm very new to YouTube. You know, this is only like my fourth video. This is my very first tutorial. And I just feel like I need to preface that and say that because there's a lot of people on YouTube who are very good at making tutorials and I don't feel like I'm one of them. <laughs> so I do apologize if you follow this and you're like, oh my gosh, it's taking forever, she's talking so slow, or, you know, it's not a perfect tutorial, and I just want to say that. So I also want to say that before you watch this video, you should know the basic stock and net stitch, you should know how to knit and purl, and also do the ribbing. I think that would help you, and also if you have a basic understanding of attaching pieces, that would be good. So just understanding the basics of knitting before you follow this tutorial. I think that would be very helpful because I'm not very good at explaining how to do that. But anyway, this is a very fun cardigan to make. I think it turned out very cute. It's very chunky, very fall. I can't wait to wear it when I go to the pumpkin patch. If this video can help anybody and you end up making a beautiful Halloween cardigan out of it, that's all I hope for, for you. Okay, so I am back from Joann's with all of my good stuff. I've got this yarn, I have one, two, three, a little more than three, like, so basically four. This was the um, leftover that I had from the other cardigan I made. So I have about four balls and I have black too. And I'm thinking with the black, I'm either gonna use it for my ribbing or I think black pockets. So I'm gonna do probably black pockets with these, but I have a couple balls of this black. And it's all the same brand, the Wool and Ease Thick and Quick. This yarn calls for a nine, a nine millimeter knitting, knitting needles. That's what it calls for. I recommend circular needles because I just think that they're much easier to use. So the first thing you're gonna wanna do is make a swatch. And the reason you're gonna wanna make a swatch is because that will determine how many you're gonna cast on and it'll show you the desired length of the cardigan that you wanna make. So first thing you wanna do is make a swatch. And what I'm gonna do for my swatch is probably cast on 10 and make maybe 10 rows and then see what I get like with that. And that will determine how many I'm gonna cast on. Okay, all right, so let's cast on 10. There's my 10. The reason I love this yarn so much is because it, it comes up so fast. So real quick, I just wanted to show you guys how I'm gonna measure it. So I only did this much of a swatch, but I feel like this gives me a good idea of like how much I'm gonna need to cast on, okay? So this is how I do it. Everyone does it differently, but if you're a beginner or this is your first time making a cardigan, this is an easy way to, to do it too. So what I do is I pull out one of my favorite cardigans. I haven't made this one, it's just one that, I, I don't remember where I got it from, but I really like it and I really like the way it fits on me. So I'm gonna measure it based off of this cardigan. What I'm gonna do is measure out my swatch to this cardigan and that will tell me how much to cast on. So I know that this length is 10 stitches, or yeah, 10 cast ons. So I'm gonna measure it according to this and we're gonna do the back panel first, okay? Because that's the biggest piece. So I'm going to lay this down. 10, 20, 30. Okay, so from that little science experiment I did, I figured out that five of these pretty much makes up the back panel. So I'm going to do, I'm gonna cast on 50 stitches of this orange for the back panel. And I'll show you what that looks like when I'm done. Okay, so I actually ended up casting on 60 because 50 just didn't feel like enough for the back panel. And also I like them bigger and chunkier and I am also going to get more pregnant. So I felt like I wanted to add 10 more. So this is what it looks like. All you have to do from this point on is stock and net stitch. Super simple, very easy. It's just the basic 
it's just, it's the basic knitting technique that you need, the basic stitch. So I stock and stitch basically all the way up and then there will be something that I'll do at the very top for my shoulders and, and I'll show you that as I get to it. But for now, I'm just gonna stock and stitch until I get to the desired length. Okay, so it's the next day, I think. And let me show you what I have so far with it. This goes a little past my belly button here. And then too, just to remind you, we still have to do probably an inch or two of the ribbing. So we'll still have another bit of that for the length. And now what we're gonna do is add a little bit of length for the shoulders. So I have 60 stitches on here. I'll probably do, I'll do 20 more on this side and 20 more on this side, and that way we'll have, that way we'll have some length over here for the shoulders and over here, and over here it'll just be this, this length. So I'll show you, I'll show you what I mean. I just wanted to show what it looks like right now, and I did measure it out with my measuring tape, and it is about 18.5 inches long. Just wanted to show how I'm sectioning it off. So. After 20 stitches, I put one stitch marker here, and then I have 20 until the next stitch marker, and then 20 more. And what I'm gonna do is grow this length maybe two inches longer, and so I'll have a little bit longer here and a little bit longer over here, and that will make it easier for me to do my two front panels and I'll show you what it looks like when I'm done. Basically, you're just gonna knit here and knit here, and you're gonna chain off these ones. Okay, so this is what the back looks like. So I did this 20, 20 stitches here and then here, and this is what the length I chose, maybe about an inch or two inches. I think I did six rows, and then I cast off 20 here. And so this is the completed back row. I do have to do the ribbing, and I'll show you how I'll do the ribbing for this. But first I'm gonna do the two front panels. And the front panels are gonna be 20 stitches each. So they'll be the same width as these right here. Okay, so moving on to the front panels. They are going to be the same length, or the same width as um, these part, these extra lengths that I made. So I'll be casting on 20 stitches. And I only have two balls left of this pumpkin color, so I will definitely run out. And I'm thinking what I'll probably do maybe is half of my sleeve, I'll make it black because I've got a lot of the black yarn. So I think halfway through my sleeve, I will finish it off with black. So I'll show you how I do that. So hopefully that will save me enough orange yarn to complete the front panels and half of the two sleeves. So we will see. Now we have the back panel. This is what the front, the top looks like. And then we have our two front panels. These are the same length as this, 20 stitches, okay? What we're gonna do next is attach the front cardigans to the back panel. And I'll show you how I do it. There's many different ways to attach pieces and there's so many different YouTube videos on how to do it. I'm just gonna show you a way that I do it that works for me. All you're gonna need is a gardening needle. This is a really thick one for a thick yarn. I think I got it on Amazon. But as you can see, it's got a big hole to put the yarn through. So this is for thick yarn. My kitty wants to say hi.
So this is what you should have. This is what it should look like when you do the front panel to the back panel. And it does curl at first, but once you add the ribbing, it won't curl as much. So in the back, you've got this nice little dip and you're gonna add ribbing to it later, but this is what it looks like for now. Okay, this is what you should have. Okay, so now that you have the front panel and the back panel attached, you're gonna make the sleeves. So the sleeves are very easy. I just make two long panels and you're just gonna kind of measure how long you want them to be. So I already started this one of my sleeves and I chained 45. So I like a big chunky sleeve. So this is very customizable to you, whatever you prefer. Um, I kind of measure as I go. So I did 45 and I looped it and just wanted to see what it would look like on my arm. So I'm wearing a pretty baggy shirt already, but that's my arm right there. And then I'm just like, okay, 45, like I think that's what I wanna do. And for this, I'm gonna keep it the same width throughout the sleeve. Some people like to shorten it as it goes and kind of have like a baggier part here and then slim it down as your arm goes down. I'm just gonna keep it 45 the entire time. So once you have the amount that you want for your sleeve length or for the width of it, you're just gonna knit stock and row stitch for as long as your arm is, however long you want it. So this is what I have so far. I'm gonna measure how it looks like. So when I have it on, this is what it looks like so far, right? That's gonna cover my shoulder like, it'll probably hang off just a little bit, so that's probably where it's gonna end. And then the sleeve is gonna begin right there. So I'm just going to knit all the way down my arm until I find the spot that I want. And I am running out of the pumpkin color, so I might have to transition like halfway through to black and I'll just have my sleeves be like, orange and then black the rest of the way. So I think that's what my sleeve's gonna end up looking like, but obviously you do you, whatever you wanna do. And like I said, it looks funky right now, but we are gonna add ribbing and it's really gonna tie it together and make it start looking like an actual cardigan. Okay, so I'm in my bedroom and the reason is because it's getting late and the sun's going down, I just got off work. So I definitely ran out of the orange yarn. So these are my two sleeves. And I think that they look pretty good. That's how they're looking like. So now it's time to attach them to the main piece. And so for, so for attaching the sleeves to the main piece, you're gonna need your gardening needle and stitch markers. Okay, these are the little baby stitch markers right here. This is how I decide where the sleeves are gonna go, okay? So I'm gonna fold it in half, my main piece like this. Just fold it in half. And then I'm gonna put this, and, and then I'm gonna fold the sleeve in half, like that. So the sleeve, the sleeve is folded evenly like that. So I know that this is even, so the top of this is going to go to the very top of my cardigan where I had attached the front panel to the back panel, like that. And then I'm just going to kind of measure and put, put my stitch marker where, where it falls, okay? So if you can see, one part of the sleeve falls right here. That's where the front one that's where the half of the sleeve falls, right there. So, all right, so that is kind of the lazy way of measuring where your sleeve's gonna go. I've never had an issue doing it this way. I know it's not the most professional way of doing it, but I think I've mentioned before that I'm kind of a lazy knitter. So I always do things like the easy way, just cause I wanna enjoy the process of knitting. I don't wanna have to like measure, you know, a lot of it. So this is where my sleeve's gonna go. Boom and boom right there. So here are the stitch markers and this is the layout of how it's gonna look. So you're just gonna stitch up your sleeve to the stitch markers that you have laid out here. So you're just gonna stitch along there and you're gonna do the same process to the other one. So I'll show you what this looks like when I'm done knitting up the sides. 
what it looks like all stitched together. So now we're gonna stitch the whole thing together. And this is kind of what I mean by that. So I just flipped this top over on this side. See, watch, I'll do it over here too so you guys can see like that. And then you're just going to stitch up the sides. So you're gonna start here and stitch all the way around. And this is the back side. So you're working on the back side so the front side has a nice looking seam. So you're just gonna knit across here and then you're gonna do the same on the other side. So just stitch across here stitch across here and then you'll have a light like a nice rough draft okay so this is how it is looking like i've got a really long shirt on so i apologize it kind of looks a little funky with this shirt but you get the idea right we have the sleeves attached i don't like how i did this look it looks so weird anyway so this side is looking really good however this side looks all kinds of weird. Why does it look like that when I attached it? I don't know why it looks like that on that side, but it's okay. Now the last thing that I have to do is just do the border. So we're gonna do a border around the bottom, a border around the top, and for the top, I'm gonna make the border kind of thick so it doesn't lean off my shoulders too much like this. So we're gonna make a little uh, thick border like that. And the border here and the border here, and then we're basically done. So that's the final touch. And I will show you how to do that. So we've been using a nine millimeter hook for the whole, for the whole cardigan. But for the cuffs and the border, we're using an eight millimeter hook. So it's just a size down. Um, that way it just looks a little neater. So this is, the this is the bottom border right here. So we're gonna be picking up stitches along the border. Okay, so like I was saying, this is how I, I'm gonna pick up my stitches along here. This is the front panel. So you can see this is the end of the front panel here, and this is where I stitch it to the back panel. So I'm gonna create a border along the bottom of this cardigan. So this is how you're gonna pick up your stitches. So front side facing you, and do you see all these little stitches here? I'm just gonna go into the edge right there, wrap my black yarn around on my eight millimeter hooks. I'm just gonna pull through. There we go. And this, I'm just gonna leave this off because I will I will be weaving it in later. So now I'm just gonna pick up every stitch. I don't know if I'm gonna pick up this one and this one. I don't think so. See how there's like this loop and this loop? That's what I don't really understand. So you can learn from my mistakes here. What I'm going to do is pick up these back loops. So I'm gonna pick up every single back loop here. And you can decide from how mine turns out if you want to do that or if you wanna do this and this. So let's just see how it turns out if I just pick up these back loops only and we'll see if the border looks fudged up or not. And then you can decide what you wanna do. All right, so I'm gonna pick up this one now. So I'm going in the back loop, wrapping my yarn, yarn around, and just pulling it through, okay? And I'm gonna make sure it's kind of loose. I'm not gonna make it super tight. So making sure there's some room there. And there's the back one again, so I'm gonna pick it up. It's kind of hard sometimes to pull through because the yarn gets kind of weird, but. All right, so I'm keeping it loose. Now I'm gonna do the next one, pull through, next one, pull through. I love working with thick yarn because it's so easy to see what you're doing. When you work with smaller yarn and smaller needles, it's just way more difficult to see what you're doing, you know? Oh, it kinda gets tricky to pull through, okay. All right, so hopefully this gives you guys a good idea of the steps I'm taking here. Just 
pulling through. Okay, so keep it, make sure to keep it loose. And I'm gonna continue doing this all the way around the bottom border. Okay, so I have attached all of my yarn to the border. And this is what it's looking like. Now I'm gonna start ribbing and I'll show you guys how I do that. Okay, so I do apologize for this like wonky setup. <laughs> I'm not a professional, okay? I'm just pretending. Now it's on the other side because we have all attached all of our stitches. So now what we're gonna do to create the border is we're going to do knit, purl, knit, purl. So there's our knit. Next is our purl. There's our nice purl there. And then we're gonna knit. Then we're gonna purl. we're gonna knit so this is the step this is how you make your ribbing okay oh shit okay knit pearl knit pearl once you grab all of your stitches okay does that make sense I really hope it does all right so you're gonna go through and knit pearl knit pearl all the way around and then when you get to this side you're gonna do it again and you're gonna do it again and you're gonna do it again and blah 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 and then I'm probably gonna do it until it's maybe that long so this is the length that I'm going with for the bottom. It's up to you however long you want it, but this is just what I chose for the length for my border. So now we're gonna go in and cast off and then we're gonna do the collar the same way. But So I've got my border here for the bottom and now it's time to start on the collar portion. So I'm gonna start doing the same process that I did doing, see these ones look a little different here because it's on the collar. So we're gonna do every single back stitch, back stitch here, back stitch there to pick up our stitches. And here, cause it's black, it's kind of hard to tell, but I can feel it. So I'll just pick up the back stitches here. And we're gonna do it the same way that we did the we're gonna do it the same way that we did the border. So I've got my yarn here, my working yarn, and I'm just gonna put it, I'm gonna start off right at the beginning here. Wait, hold on, like that. And then I'm gonna wrap. Then I'm gonna wrap my working yarn around, like that. So now I'm just gonna pick up, just like how we did the bottom border. I'm going to pick up all of the back stitches in order to do the around the neck and collar. Okay, there's not really, I'm just going to kind of create my, there's some areas where I'm just kind of creating my own stitch to put it in because like here when I you know, added it, it's kind of funky, so I just kind of, I'm doing my own little version. And then remember to make it loose too, so that it's easier for you when you are ready to do the purl and stitch. All right, so here's kind of funky because there's something, there. no, I'm just gonna go this one, like that. So yeah, I'm breaking up all the back stitches and keeping it pretty loose. Yay, okay, so I just finished the border for this, for um, the collar, that's what I'm trying to say. <laughs> um, I just finished the border and I'm really happy with how it turned out. So it definitely worked with the way that I was stitching. Um, and I know I was showing y'all so you could see, but I liked how it turned out with the stitching. It was, it's perfect. I really like the look. Now I'm gonna go in, clip, and weave in my ends 
and I think I'm gonna add a black pocket maybe, but I'm gonna see how it looks when I weave in all my ends and then I will decide if I want to do anything else with it. So I'll show you what that looks like when I'm done weaving in my ends and like kind of the final project and see if I wanna add anything else to it. Okay, here it is. So it is all stitched up. All of our little hangnails are gone. And this is how it turned out. So I don't think I'm gonna add anything else to it. I was considering like a pocket here, but I feel like there's enough black in this cardigan to not need like another, you know, like a black pocket or anything. The only thing I am having a hard time with is the sleeve. Ugh. Look at that sleeve. It's like all tight and awkward. I'm probably gonna have to redo this honestly and honestly I think the issue with it is just I just made it too tight when I was stitching it up it's too tight that that's the issue with it I can't wait to wear it out and about I'm hoping that it cools down a little bit uh, before Halloween so I could actually wear it and enjoy it before Halloween so we'll see but it's so cute so I'm pretty proud of my cardigan I'm pretty happy with how it turned out I will I know I keep saying this, but every time I see it, it drives me crazy. So I'm definitely gonna have to fix this up. And honestly, when I stitch it together, I'm just gonna stitch it very loose because it just looks too tight. Anyway, for the most part, I love the way it turned out and I'm very proud of it. Hope that you guys liked it too. I hope it wasn't too difficult to follow. I'm a beginner, okay? I don't totally know what I'm doing. I'm not as experienced as some of these other people who are amazing at their tutorials, and I do apologize for that. However, if it helped you at all, if you followed it and you feel like you got the gist of it and it helped you create a cardigan similar, that's all I hope for, and I hope you like it. I hope you like how it turned out, and let me know. Um, if you followed it and it turned out really good, <laughs> uh, go ahead and tag me on Instagram. I would love to see how yours turned out and um, comment if it was helpful to you. And I hope you like it and I hope that you have a good Halloween season. It's my favorite time of the year and I hope that you guys enjoy it and you have a safe, happy Halloween. And I hope you get to wear a fun Halloween cardigan with your holiday. <laughs> So anyway, thank you guys for watching. I hope you guys have a fabulous day and a fabulous Halloween. And I'll see you guys in the next video. So thanks for watching.